It's 12 o'clock. Welcome to Taking Stock right here. It's it was it the 7th of the December 2023. It's damp outside, but I've got the warmth in the form of a lovely jumper here. It's uh, Vadim Alexander, <laughs> head of healthcare SP Angel. Yo, fella. How are you doing, Justin? Yeah, I'm good. And uh, Vadim, thanks for coming along and joining me on this because uh, Lars has been chatting to myself. But we get lots of comments. And by all means, everyone, join in the comments. We've had some news out on Polarium today. Uh, and Vadim's just been looking at that. And it is rising. Finally, it's having a little yeah. bounce. It's been very painful for people. But uh, by all means, if you like the content, hit that thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And, uh, of course, the Vox Markets app is free. Download that, voxmarkets.co.uk forward slash app. The theme I want to start off with, Vadim, before we get into Polarium uh, yeah. and some other bits of news, is... Um, I said, in this market, you need this quality to make money. And I want people to guess what it is, okay? So, uh, Riffisoff, straight away, uh, the badge for the first comment of the day goes to Riffisoff. And he says, luck. <laughs> and he says, well, it, it, it's not. And then he says, okay, I'm supposed to say patience or resilience. Uh, or RH says resilience. But, uh, um, yeah. And my thoughts, it is patience, uh, Vadim. You know, yeah. because... Uh, I look at Future PLC today, and I've been stalking that company for a long time. It's one of the ex-darlings of the stock market. In fact, I'll show, I'll show you the chart of uh, Future previously. Let me share the screen. This is the aim short, aim alter index, by the way. You know, mm-hmm. down since September 2021, down for two years, pretty much, down 48%. But we are having a bit of a bounce. And like you see here, let me take some of these moving averages off. It's a bit messy. Uh, you can see here that um, it is above the 50-day moving average now. And these sort of previous areas here, that 1 to 720, 730, could be good. I think we're having a little bit of bounce here. But um, yeah. I'll show you p- future PLC, right? So I was waiting. I thought, shall I get in before the results come out? Uh, and um, I thought, oh, no, I'll wait. It's a good job I waited. Look at the chart there. Yeah. Today, yeah. it dropped by 30%. It's bounced yeah. back up. It's, it's really come back and spiked really down low. But, um, but it is, I mean, if you look at the previous chart here, going up, you know, for, it's been a darling, you know, it's gone from like uh, a couple of years ago, back at £1.30, up to 40 quid a share, you know, so it's a cracking uh, it's company, and it's in digital media advertising, there are a lot of brands, they own Go Compare as well, uh, but a lot of the big branded magazines and Marie Claire, all that, they're all that kind of stuff, so it's a good mm-hmm. company, a new CEO just come in, but of course, in this market, it's hard work, advertising and all that, but um, I, think, I think they were unfairly hit today, the revenue missed a top line a little bit, but not hugely, uh, but mm-hmm. that's the result, isn't it? In the market today, it's really risk averse, isn't it? Correct, absolutely, and that's that's what you'd expect if you've missed anything. If you miss anything, that you know you're disproportionately punished. Uh, your stock is, you know what I mean. So you know, better to wait, in my opinion, especially if you're if you're teetering on a, you know buying right before a, an event like results. <laughs> I can't help but think you'll get more upside if you wait, get the result you want. It probably won't all get priced in. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. As yeah. opposed to, you know, in a in a difficult market like this, we know what happens with the downside when it goes wrong, like you just described. Yeah. But on the other side of the equation, let's say you waited and, it, you know, they smashed it. You probably wouldn't get the full rally. Exactly. So you're better off knowing that yeah. there's, you know, it's the result is positive and then trying to get in as quickly as possible. Yeah, because what happens is, you know, a lot of people in a stock like this, for example, even if they exceeded, you'd still get people who are underwater taking profit, you know, so exactly. it would suppress the, the actual, what should have happened in the share price, it would suppress that. Let's have a quick look at the uh, the indices, see what they're doing here on the stock exchange. Uh, it's, it's, do you know what, the only one up, and that's only just recently, I've been looking at this morning, uh, but the AIM all share is up today, 0.27%, everything else down, FTSE 100 down 0.11%, FTSE 250 domestically big companies are 0.4%, uh, it's, it's, it's a safe play, look, in the FTSE 100 all the sort of utilities are rising, National Grid, Seven Trent, uh, Smith, well, you, you, you know, utilities, what are the fallers today? Uh, or the airway, uh, airlines, uh, BA plus BT was down, Vodafone, so telecoms, but um, okay. Uh, how's the but, how's the three? How's the two fifty doing? Sorry, I missed that. The two fifty is up, is down slightly, point four one percent. But is that a cracking rally? In fact, I'll, I'll that's that's just, that's why yeah. I want I wanted to focus on that too a little bit because uh, I'm seeing a lot of the mid caps. You know, you and I have discussed in the past on the podcast. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, there's a there's a suite of mid caps that um, I just think we're we're starting to see a proper rally in them. You know, I've, we discuss stocks, look, we're, we're going to talk about Polarian later on, but, you know, we discuss stocks like Deliveroo, um, you know, like AO.com, uh, even yeah. EasyJet. And, yeah. you know, they, they've done well. They've, the, the last 
10 days of, you know, I've seen a good rally in these stocks. And I think there's a lot more mileage in them to go, you know, so, yeah. some, some less so like, uh, you know, the ASOS is in Boohoo's of this, although Boohoo has had a good rally too in this last 10 days. So, you know, there, it feels like we're seeing a bit of a comeback. Um, yeah. You know, we'll see mid caps rally first and then usually, you know, hopefully, hopefully it then trickles down into small caps. Yeah, well, look at that. I mean, this is the low of uh, FTSE 250 back in on the 30, 13th of October, 2022. It's now up almost 12% from that. It did have a, a, a retest that low uh, recently on the 27th of October this year. So a yeah. year later, October is an awful month. Look at that. October is the low year last year. And it yeah. retested that, revisited, but not as low. And now yeah. it's up sort of uh, 12% from the low. Um yeah, so it's very. I don't know what it's very telling yesterday. You know, it's, it's all about interest rates and inflation, all that stuff. But the bond market yesterday was very interesting because if I show you this a two year bond, uh, this is the yield, by the way, um, it's just crossing what's called a 200 day moving average, you know, support there. And that was at 4.5. Now, the last time it actually crossed this, it did dip down once, but it didn't, didn't actually go below it. But the last time it crossed it was on the upside way back in literally February 2021. And that was the tail end, pretty much, of the bull market. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. So the bonds, of course, it, it yields in, inversely related to the markets. And so that crossed the 200 moving average. And I did tweet out yesterday, OK, where's the start of the bull market? Because this is significant in my mind. The bond yield is dropping to the point now yeah. it's, it's, you know, crossing over the 200 day moving average. We're seeing, you know, lots of predictions of uh, interest rates coming down. And so mm -hmm. we, it's not going to be, you know, a smooth ride, a smooth rally. But I do think that's, you know, quite significant that that's done that. And I think when Macy's markets start to rally year end. I do you know what? Looking at stats, even when you see a market that's down for two years in a, on, a, on, a, on a row, Th doesn't this that pay off? Yeah. Absolutely. This is this is not highly unusual for it to be a down market for this long. It's yeah. really long. So it's yeah. bound to eventually recover. And you're right. I guess, you know, if you look at some of the, um, you know, like yields and things like that, they're all pointing more in the right direction than they were, say, a year ago. Um, just so you know, the, the, everything you said about um, the, 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 the broader market is reflected in, in the biotech and healthcare market as well. I yeah. like if you look at a barometer of the the you know the healthcare market is the Nasdaq Biotech Index, and it's yeah. shown exactly that you know it topped out in slightly in something like June, July, or August 2021, 5,500 dropped all the way down to a low of 3,300 in October 2022. Yeah, then yeah. then rallied for you know 30 percent. And then erased all of those rallies in the in the subsequent years. So from October to roughly October this year, 2023, yeah. so October 22 to October 23, it had a massive dead cat bounce. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, and that's all been erased. But what's encouraging is it didn't retest the lows. So I think, you know, it's all time low was, well, sorry, all time low since the, uh, the in yeah. this downturn was 3,300 in October 2022. It retested it, but not quite. It, it hit 3,600, I think, this October. But now we're rallying again. So we're up 10%. So it's yeah. really, you know, it's really market-wide. Even when you look at a specific sector, it's gone through that same, those same, you know, maybe the the peak and troughs have been higher or lower, but it's yeah. gone through the same one year of difficulty. It's had a bit of a rally. It's come back. It's been difficult. But now definitely we're seeing a, 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 a proper rally. And as you've as you've rightly pointed out, you're breaking through some moving averages there. And hopefully, mm -hmm. I hope this is the bull market uh, that we were. That's yeah. long awaited. Long awaited. Well, I was what I was listening to. Um, and I did this a while back. I went through the AIM All Share Index chart, and I looked at the last two times it's happened two years consecutive negative returns, and it's only happened yeah. twice as far back as the chart goes. And that was the uh, Great Financial Crash and the dot com bubble. And mm -hmm. um, the third year, it literally rallied like heck. You know, two thousand nine and into twenty twenty, uh, two thousand two, uh, and, and apparently a small cap index as well. If you look at that, it's only been three times that's happened. It's in the seventies, and again, it never, it's never done three years negative, and mm -hmm. and uh, apparently the second year is always the worst, and then the following year after two years, a heck of a rally. So I think twenty twenty four is is going to be a good one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a strap in uh, ticket pick here. Uh, just going to Vox front page here. We've got, Shield therapeutic impact to the most red down here um, is Polarian and uh, Shield therapeutic. So let's let's go into Polarian because yep. finally uh, we're getting a bit of a bounce here. Company update has been quiet for a while, uh, yep. but 
have you read it? I assume you've read some of this. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot in it. Um, but by the same token, there's nothing material like uh, there is no, you know, it's it's just a nice update to kind of tell yeah. us where they're at, um, which I think is useful. I'm glad they did that. It, it, it's helpful because I think there was a bit of a um, news uh, radio silence on the news front and people were getting worried and the shares are going down. Um, yeah. w- number one thing that's in that announcement that, you know, is, is reassuring is just the cash position until... I think they say, look, it's not reassuring in that they are running out of cash, but at least they're explicit that they yes. have cash, you know, into tw- second half of 24, which is good. They yeah. say Q3, 24. Q3, and, yes. Yeah, and, and you and I know that could be stretched, in, you know, in an emergency. So, you know, that it, that's that's good. Uh, there, there is still time to get certain things done and, you know, hopefully, you know, come up with a financing solution, which I think is the main, thr- you know, it's, that's the thrust of what's behind the share price decline is yeah. uh, you know the concern over the financial position of the of the company but i guess the main point in this announcement on that is that it's a little better than you know than you know needing cashing out next month right we're yeah. we're not in that position we've got at least you know anywhere between 7 to 10 months runway as per what they're saying and then I know, and you know, any everyone knows that it, you know, in an emergency, that could be stretched. So that's that's not plenty of time, but that's good. That's okay. Uh, yeah. Now the question is, you know, what can they deliver in that time? And you know, they talk about you know breaking in to um, you, you know new leads. There's there's they're, they're still focusing on commercial traction, uh, mm-hmm. which is good. Um, they're talking about you know establishing. Um, they, they've talked about their reimbursement, which I thought was really good news. But again, in a difficult market, reimbursement is you know um, what what uh, what they get reimbursed per scan, right? And on and under Medicaid, Medicare in the U.S. And what they got is they got uh, not only a reimbursement code but a reimbursement price, and it's higher than what we had expected initially. And that, uh, in this announcement, they reiter- reiterate what that is, which is a thousand two hundred to a thousand three hundred dollars, which is fantastic. I mean, that's that's very good. They also yeah. say you know what the what the uh, you know hospital request could be for total reimbursement and that's two thousand five hundred dollars so there's a it makes a business case for usage of their product right because mm-hmm. because not only do they get reimbursed but the hospitals are selling into get reimbursed per scan right so there yeah. there is a, a business case it's not fifty dollars it's in the thousands which is exactly what we want to see so yeah. all positive news but there is still a problem you know they're not the, the commercial traction is slow and that's that's the fundamental issue here. So, you know, what we'd like to see over time is a number one thing that needs to happen is they need to, you know, increase their runway for financing. That's yeah, that's yeah. going to hang over this business no matter how we like, you know, no matter what we say, no matter what we talk about this company, it's irrelevant while that hangs over them. And I think that, you know, I think that's the problem fundamentally here on the shares. That's putting pressure on the shares. Once that gets resolved, I think you might even just get a rally on the basis of it getting resolved. The problem is, you know, often these things get resolved with discounted placings and, you know, but, you know, there might be other creative solutions and let's hope for that, you know, debt, who knows, you know, you know what, I, I don't know, you know, we'll see what they come up with. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's what's weighing on the shares. Once that gets resolved, they buys them more time to, um, to you know, for, for the commercial traction to come through, uh, which is quite frankly, delayed uh, a bit long overdue, you know, and I just don't know how much traction, you know, they can, they can easily get. It's, it's, it's slow. That's, that's clear. Yeah. 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 I mean, first and foremost, I I always say this, when you're investing in a loss making company, the most important thing of all is cash. Uh, Because if they run out of cash, They've got to get it from some way. Normally, it's from shareholders or new ones or existing ones. Uh, and uh, in this market, we know that the equity, you know, uh, it's sort of a market's been frozen to a certain extent. Or if you do a fundraise, it literally is at a massive discount. Uh, and uh, you know, and and Polarian is down ninety five percent the share price. I mean, the chart is literally horrible. Look at that from there. Yeah, the there ninety five percent in the last eight hundred odd days. Uh, but but also, yeah, there's, there's some some good things in here where. They do say uh, expansion of FDA labeling, hope, hopefully. And they talk about their, their relationship with um, Philips. They've been doing a training session with them. And they've also signed a contract to sponsor a new clinical trial in patients with COPD in collaboration with a, a leading nebulizer device. So it seems like they are busy. But like you said, is that concern? When I, when I first invested in this company, I thought, you know, 
It's a no-brainer. You know, it's the best tech out there. Uh, it's going to get commercial traction, and yet it hasn't really executed on that commercial uh, attraction. And, and or you know, the, the commercialization of this product hasn't been as fast as everyone had hoped or thought. So that's a Correct. little bit worrying. Maybe it's just I don't know. Maybe things work slower uh, in the real world. Of course they do, but um, it's still the technology is still very relevant and very advanced compared to anything else, isn't it? For sure that, you know, I've always liked the technology in this business. I am a bit disappointed by the commercial traction. Um, and that's the problem, you know, that, you know, that's what's led them to get into this situation where they're running out of cash in a difficult market. You know, those, those yeah. that combination is, is not great. So look, th those are the problems well, the upside, you know, you're right. You know, Philips has mentioned there, we know Braco, which is another big imaging company is an, an investor of theirs. Who, who knows what's possible there? You know, these are the, the kind of the, the uh, the unknown surprises that could come. You know, if you strike an agreement with anything like a Phillips, these are you know those those are those could be material, right? Yeah. But but it's it's hard to it's hard to imagine that happening in the next month. Do you know what I mean? I I just don't yeah. see that happening imminently. Uh, but it's possible, and they have partnerships with big. You know, they have a partnership with Phillips, so they they are interacting with these big companies. Yeah, and I, I was thinking, you know, why wouldn't they? I mean, There's a question. They could even get bought out, you know, because at the moment the market cap they're at, you know, if, if Philips deem it, you know, uh, you know, commercially significant for them, uh, they could buy them out. But uh, and I suppose, like, like I said, we are in a tough market, and you know, we can never, like we just said, then the markets are likely to rally in 2024, and with that buoyancy of the markets, then it, easy, it gets easy to raise money, and uh, you know, the, the tide will lift all boats pretty much, so a rising tide, so the, yeah. the share price will go up. And, and then it'll be easy for them. But, you know, it's come, it, it's literally been for them, the scent of a storm that you've had literally FDA, you know, a, a, a complete response letter, which wasn't foreseen. Uh, and then, you know, took a big hit, they spend more than everything was delayed by years. So their cash got run down. That was in the middle then of the start of the bear market. So it's literally been a nightmare for them, isn't it? <laughs> the combination it, of everything, you know. It has actually, It's it's been, you know, the ultimate point is they got approved in the end. Right. So, yeah. you know, the the FDA, not, the, you know, you, it is what it is. The regulator, you know, it's not it's not their responsibility what it does to the company. They, they need the information they need. And that's what they got eventually. But yeah. um, but the shame is that it was de delayed a year, um, you know, but still got approved. Had it been approved in its original and you know, on its original timeline, it would look completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah. They would have been yeah, selling yeah. it, you know, and they exactly. probably exactly. probably would have yeah. raised a lot more capital in a, in, in the bull market. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so a couple of other things. Are, are you are you aware of Shield Therapeutics? They do yeah, aquifers. Uh, like, uh, yeah, definitely. You know yeah. How, yeah. How are they doing on the basis on the back of today's announcement? I didn't quite. I, I didn't have a, much of a chance to look at the numbers as compared to what they were saying previously. And but on quick glance, is there anything really new material in there? Because I think they made a Q three pre close or like at the in September they made an announcement with these figures. Was there yeah, any no, new figures well, in here? Yeah, yeah I, I don't know, but uh, yeah. It Nevertheless, I, I think what they are getting traction. Of course, it, it's now they're based in the, pretty much in the US. And of course, they're hitting it hard there with uh, their partner and sales partner. And the figures are impressive. I mean, total prescriptions up, you know, 76%. Uh, average net selling price increased 24%. Uh, um, they say net, total net revenue of 4.1 million. Uh, so it, it's all going in the right direction, I think. And, and De fact, definitely. Yeah, so broken notes uh, sort of suggest, you know, decent top line growth. I don't think profitable this year, maybe next year, year after, but. Uh, I think, uh, totally, yeah. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I I'm looking at Shield myself personally, thinking of maybe getting it in now. You know, I I, I okay. like I like the pricing, etc. And yeah. I have been kind of follow, I just haven't had a real opportunity this morning of looking at the, the the actual results they said. But broadly speaking, th this is either is or isn't the hockey stick moment. Okay, so yeah. they're seeing good uptake and quarter on quarter growth is phenomenal. But I think they're expecting and hoping for. I think they said today this fifty four thousand scripts um have been uh secured this year and i think they're aiming for something like a hundred thousand by the end of the year so you know there's there's a real still demand on the last quarter right yeah. so this calendar quarter that we're in right now it is key um i i you know to me that's the, the the danger in this story is that there might be another cash call before they get to break even, which I think is in 25 or 26 or 2025 okay. or something like that, right? So yeah, there, yeah. there is still this risk that even if revenues are going like this, um, yeah. you know, an uptake is there, 
that you have another cash call. And I think that's putting pressure on their shares because, you know, the, their shares are still under pressure. Um, mm. You know, so let, let's yeah, see. What, it, I mean, literally, it's bouncing off that 5.6 pence level. And it's been doing that now uh, since literally July 2022. You know, it's, it's yeah. been going up and down. It rallies a bit, comes back. Uh, you know. the, the one thing that is that I did see um, that I thought was good is pricing is moving in the right direction, too. It's not going down. It's going up, yeah. which is good. Because there's, there's, um, I, I didn't, I don't quite understand this, and I'll, I'll look into it for next time. But you know, there was a risk that um, they have to give away certain amount of of drug or something like that in there to to, to get people, you know, to start. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like gross revenue versus net revenue, right? Yeah. So, so the the discounts or the 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 bits that you have to give away for free were quite generous initially, and now they're getting people taking it and you know they're getting they're becoming re- repeat subscribers so the worry was that the the average blended average pricing was coming down and you know who know who knows how far down that would go well it looks like in this set of in this update the pricing is now going back up on average blended average which is a good yeah. trend you want to see you know what i mean yeah. that means yeah. that it's working that their plan is working the whatever discounts or or you know uh, upfront freebies that they're giving is actually generating the then paying subscriptions that's yeah. uh, that's key. Sorry, someone is just trying to call. That's all right. uh, okay. Just going to cover off some comments here. Um, I've got to be careful saying your name again. Uh, Daftus Cluck oh. is uh, is a pop am, poster. Am here. I there? Am I there, Justin? Well, yeah, yeah, you're still with me. Yes, you're still with okay, me. Okay, so, sorry about uh, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Justin, yeah. Uh, that SBDS thing you discussed yesterday—that's uh, Silver Bullet Data. I do hold shares in that. It's a very interesting company. I think they are in this space of AI and uh, helping companies get a better return in their advertising. Because uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, Vadim, but third-party cookies are now being outlawed. Pretty much, uh, you can't track people on the internet to advertise to them. So this is a company that addresses that very cleverly by using AI and seeing what uh, you know websites are most relevant. Uh, to advertisers by reading video and all that stuff. Anyway, um, how did some someone says the 8.25% declared TR1 was spread X as a CFD? How does that work? If someone's taking a one million placing, I know who it is took the placing. They're a high net worth. That's how they. That's how they do it. I don't know why they use um, spread X, but they do. Um, ben, profit warning out today from fir- uh, Future. Yeah, we talked about that. It's future though now, literally. Are on a PE of something like four or five. Their margins are very good. They operate margin about twenty percent. Uh, they are generating a lot of cash. They have a net debt. I mean, they've got, uh, but you know, they're generating lots of cash. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I, th- I think they're going to be a good play once the market turns and and, and it digests this news. It's only to a top line miss a little bit. I don't think. Um, Virtu, which is very interesting, because we are seeing now. I don't know if you're aware of Virtu, but they. This, you know, if in the cost of living crisis, there are certain stocks that are barometers, aren't there, of the of the uh, of the way people are spending. For example, this is Motorpoint, uh, Vidim. This is one of the biggest independent car sellers in the UK, and you can see what's happened here. Cost of living crisis now. People are buying, you know, cars with finance. It's costing like ten percent. Uh, you know, it's not cheap. So people are not yeah. spending on big big ticket items now. A different player in this space. They, they just own and sell cars. A Virtu. Now they have. What is a franchise model, which of course is very good because they get paid. But even mm-hmm. today, they've come out with a training update. And you know, the chart on that is doing very well, completely opposite to a motor point. But they came out with a training update today, and they do say pretty much there's less selling going on. Uh, people are, you know, are not buying expensive cars. And you can see, and I I, I know, I don't know who that lady is, uh, but you can see um, you know, that this cost of living crisis is not going to go away overnight. And I think sometimes you have to make distinction between the economy and the markets. There are still certain sectors of the economy that will be hit for a long time because even if interest rates come down, they're not going to come down in the next you know, three months quickly or six months quickly. They're going to step down slowly. And in that time, there are businesses you know, going to be hit because people are still suffering from mortgages going up. Like I said, I don't know how what percentage it is, but a lot of people, I think more than half, they haven't had, had it re- renewed their mortgages yet. You know, so, yeah. when they do, that cost of uh, literally they have to tighten their belts. They do say here um, they've been resilient, but um, what do I say? Uh, changing markets, and they say they see ex- being weak. Uh, yeah, the board considers the UK used vehicle values are likely to continue to weaken above historic norms. The price of vehicles going down because people are not buying them, uh, and they do say it, it's not looking good out there. And you can see the outlook. Um, 
The current consumer environment remains volatile. The board remains cautious in light of external negative factors. And I said, when you're picking stocks, you've got to be aware, haven't you, of where they are. And is this company likely to come out with any better news in the next three to six months? Apart from yeah. cost cutting, if they're not getting the customers in, they can't do a lot, can they, you know? No, for sure. I mean, look, I agree with you that the cost of living still is still rolling out. That problem is not completely gone away. But you're right. There are certain sectors that are going to, I think, recover. Um, you know, post-COVID, remember we called it the K-shaped recovery? This is yeah. like after the original. I think we're going to see that again. You know, we'll see we'll see certain sectors coming out faster than others. Um, some just by the sheer fact that they've been in so long, like tech is already starting to recover. It was first in, right? Yeah. So be, I think there'll be an element of first in, first out. Tech and healthcare were first in. They, they slowed way before the rest of the economy type stocks slowed. So, you know, I can tell you from healthcare's perspective, we talked about it earlier, the, the slowdown started in June, July, 2021. You know what I mean? So yeah. now we're well into over two years. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a bounce in the in that sector. Tech is definitely seeing a bounce. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if those sectors came out first um, or are there's or hopefully are starting to. Um, yeah. But you're right. Some some of maybe the more um, retail type stocks, you know, might might. Although I say that, you know, I just earlier said, you said I'm, I'm invested in some of them. The deliveries of this world are doing OK. They've had a good, pretty good rally. Um I think EasyJet's doing really, really good. Yeah, deliveries. I mean, well, that's a lovely looking chart, to be honest. Look at that. Look at yeah. that. You see that, Eva, when we chatted before, I think I put this line on before, and I said, break above that. They break 200 day moving average there, but then they need to break new highs. And they did here, literally, at 99, well, a quid, you know, yeah. and uh, and now they're at uh, 137. And like you see that nice little 200 day moving average coming down, bowing yeah. around nicely, and a series of higher highs, higher lows. Yeah, it's looking yeah. good. What, what else are you in? So EasyJet, I think, is just it's just overlooked. I don't know why people like. I, believe you me, I'm, look, I'm a healthcare analyst. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like <laughs> to be talking about a discount airline or you know is is, is not my everyday. But it, it's just it's a stock that doesn't make sense. It's doing yeah. financially exceptionally well. You know the 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 COVID years are well behind them. Their balance sheet is exceptionally strong. They're not a direct peer of Ryanair. I think a lot of people think of it that way. They're slightly more premium to Ryanair. But look at Ryanair's market cap. It just doesn't yeah. make any sense. I mean, EasyJet's yeah. worth three and a half billion, and Ryanair is worth fifteen billion. And yes, they have. They're a larger. They're a larger organization, but not justified by that price differential. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and if EasyJet had a balance sheet problem that we could talk about to justify that, yes, but they don't. You know, and and, you know, people are worried about the cost of living crisis, which we discussed. And it, that is a concern. But again, it's a concern for Ryanair, too. Why is Ryanair yeah. priced at 15 you know, billion and EasyJet priced at three and a half billion? So I see yeah. I see upside for EasyJet. I think that one is. A, yeah. And plus, you know, I don't know if everyone's been to an airport recently. Uh, you can't walk around. There's still there's airports are rammed with people. <laughs> it's yeah. Like yeah, yeah, people yeah. are putting they're putting, you know, travel ahead of you know, sta consumer staples. And yeah, you know, yeah. Well, you know, know what I mean? in fact, it's, it's funny you said, I, I know, I, I think people do still hang on to their holidays, especially, yeah. you know, it, I think during COVID, people thought they would miss them so much. I think yeah. I always want a holiday once a year at least, you know, or some people, yeah. if they got the money, they will go for that and they'll put money aside for that. But look how yeah. fast, we talking about Virtue there, they came out the trading update, you know, today. Look how fast this changed. This is um, the end of 31st of August. Their numbers are good, you know? All yeah. growing there on a, this is the interim yeah. results. The numbers are good. Only now is that cost of living crisis starting to kick in. And like I say, it's yeah. a big lagging factor here. And I think to a certain extent, what's going to happen is you will see, you know, people after Christmas will be tightening their belts. You see a lot of company comes out with more profit warnings. I think you see jobs sort of going down, the economy taking a hit, and that will stimulate or motivate the central banks to do something because they'll start seeing it really biting i think next year but yeah. you know conversely that is very good in the markets because once the central banks are worried you know there's only one thing they can do and yeah. that's reduce interest rates and so i see the yeah. markets really um so i i, I generally i said yes sir. i see a sort of santa rally maybe it's seasonal but i do see a little mm -hmm. rolling over maybe in quarter one for the markets but then i think we'll see uh you know a more dovish talk from the central banks which will buoy the markets and then i think the next three quarters or at least the second half of the year will be gangbusters i think absolutely yeah no, no, um, I agree with you. It's not what's happening in the real economy. It's the anticipation of the financial markets that, that is key, yeah. right? You know, yeah, I mean, they're um, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you aware of Game Workshop? 
this is like a, a stalwart. Um, I don't even know what they really do with these little figures and games that uh, is really anarchy, but a strong audience. And they've been a sort of market darling for a long time. You know, they do Warhammer, is it, or something like that? I don't know. Um, are, are you aware of it, Vadim? No, no. I, I, uh, I'm thinking what, of GameStop. Yeah, no, no. It's, it's games. It's, it's literally, if you've got a. Yeah. If you go, uh, I'll try and find the. Um, let me just find their website, right? You won't believe this, uh, but they literally are a standout um, games workshop. They are a standout performer. Uh, so yeah, so this is their website. So um, the share screen here. Oh, hang on. oh, yeah, reject cookies. Here's cookies. Uh, always relevant. What, what country? I mean, uh, I mean, I mean UK. Yeah, I got that. How do I get rid of that? There we are. There we are. So um, welcome to Warhammer. So all these little toys and games they play, and people buy these machines of war, and, and, and I don't know if they play them or paint them, but you wouldn't, I mean, look at this website, you think, this is not a star company. It's not a, a, a financial <laughs> performer. Amazon just bought the rights to televise like Warhammer or something off them, right? And uh, if, you, if I show you the chart, it's one of the outstanding performers. Look at this. If you go back to literally, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let's go back to sort of uh, 2016, they were five six quid a share they're at 120 quid a share right that's what they topped out at uh, just yeah. after, the, after the bull market they came down massively did a deal with amazon uh and they've risen again sort of over 100 quid a share today they came out with a trading update and it wasn't as strong as, as people hoped they just did say top line is in line everything's in line but if you look at this um Core revenue, not less than 235 million. It's not cheap. They're not cheap at all. But they're mm. very sticky customer. You know, uh, I do call them anoraks, but people love that kind of stuff. Mm. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 235 versus 213 is just fine. Licensing revenue is down uh, to 12 from 14.3. Core operating profit is estimated at 82. That's up. Uh, but licensing profit, again, is down a little bit and profit is estimated. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the, the, the half year results so it's down 10 percent today but it's one of those stocks you've got to keep an eye on because you you know they'll bounce back because you know their customer is highly addictive highly sticky uh, and they love all that kind of stuff that uh, it doesn't appeal to me worries <laughs> i don't understand it i don't really understand it. it's just these things that people buy <laughs> and they paint them or buy them but i said amazon's bought the rights to televise you know or something around this so it's 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 one of the things that has a really niche um, loyal audience, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, um, you know, and the good thing about that is that it, it, it explodes in terms of the revenue generation, right? So you've got the, yeah. the product itself, but then you have the rights to, like you say, like like Amazon just bought, the rights to televise, the rights to make movies, and God knows what yeah. else. Yeah. And they, they are there literally, what's the market cap there? Um, this is the, the 3.5 billion. Um, you know, let's ferocious armies clash without the drawback of actual bloodshed. Found in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's, it's nuts. I'll have but, a closer uh, look. I'm uh, interested. But they're, they're not cheap. It's like, if you look at that, I mean, uh, what are they saying? Uh, you know, three point five billion is the market cap, right? So if you look at um, what is the 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 profit before tax estimated at not less than ninety four. So let's say hundred million. Let's say two hundred million for the year. Cause that's that's uh, is that half year or is it half year? Let's say two hundred million for the year. You know, and there are three point five billion. So you're talking like twenty five times, thirty times. You know. PE pretty much yeah, so not yeah. Cheap. Uh, and my only company. concern my only concern with these things and it still, still seems to be going in the right direction but you know trends come and go <laughs> yeah. there's also you know you're right in saying you've got your diehard fans but then sometimes the trend passes and people are just not interested in, in that anymore you know what i mean I, yeah. I, that that that's always a risk yeah um right it's, it's, let's have a look at um uh graham says here um stx are now getting better margin after discounting heavy last year's Greg CEO says this margin pattern is typical of launch. Uh, Informa, how does Tui? Have you looked at Tui? How does Tui compare with EasyJet? I've seen Tui recovering well, but not looked into details. I mean, no. I just, wasn't there really worry about Tui's debt a while back? Yeah, you know, that's so it. Tui, a... Tui's balance sheet comparatively is. I think that's the main difference. Again, I'm mm -hmm. not claiming to be a travel analyst, but but I can tell you one thing: is the balance sheets are drastically different. Tui has had far more difficulty coming out of COVID. Uh, you yeah. know, they, they got uh, they had multiple bailouts. I think the German government bailed them out, you know, two or three times. Um, and there was the, the the balance sheet is just not in the same position. Definitely. Yeah. And I think yeah. I think EasyJet with its travel company, see, EasyJet has established a travel company, you know, like um, uh, not just the not just the airline. Right. So like bookings, uh, booking the whole travel package like Tui yeah. does actually very well. And EasyJet's that business is going gangbusters. 
So I yeah. think what they're doing is they're they're starting to steal market share from the twoies of this world that are struggling in that line of business. So yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Once, without question, well, my preference between the two is is easy. Yeah, without question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, one company actually that had some uh, positive news out today, so um, which is interesting. AJ Bell. I uh, know you know the, the sort of you know brokers, fund managers, all that. Been asset managers. They've all been hammered because, of course, they're playing the market. But well, that's um, good news. That's good news. Yeah. That those are barometers yeah. of you know sudden liquidity improving, trading improving. I mean, normally that's normally. Yeah. What, what what was the source of their? Um, so there, there we are. So their... the final results is the year, and uh, yeah. the, the record. I, I don't I, you know. I don't know what the second half is like, but um, a record financial performance, revenue up 33% to $218 million, uh, profit before tax margin uh, 40%, up from 35%. So the, the, the revenue's up, the margins are up, uh, the d- dividends are good. So another successful year. But if you look at the chart, I said, you know, their main competitor, I suppose, is Harkins Lanzo, which is the market leader. That's been hammered. They've all been hammered. But I do see, you know, you know these are safe recovery plays. These are no, no, that's... No, de- no debt, lots yeah, of yeah. cash. And, um, you know, if you scroll down, how much cash I'm they actually, got? This is very interesting. That, to me, that these are barometers of things changing in, yeah. the, in the capital markets, right? So, yeah. you know, you're right. Like some some still are struggling. Maybe one, maybe AJ Bell's. I don't know the, the, the businesses well enough, but certainly some are better businesses than others. And they're, But they're all suffering in a difficult market. So if you're starting yeah. to see the better ones move out of that, it means that trading's improved. I don't mean revenue trading. I mean trading of stocks has improved yeah. right so their yeah. revenue source is starting to pick up again and if people are starting to trade in stocks that means that you know the stock market's starting to reactivate because uh, that's are, I mean, one it, thing we have seen is liquidity is dried up across yeah. the board right in capital markets so if yeah. liquidity starts to improve that's that's a uh, that that you know that bodes well for the future yeah, I mean, uh, there we are. Look at operating profit up. You see there from 58 to 86. Uh, profit for the financial year from 46 to 68, pretty much. Uh, you know, there's no debt. There's cash of 146 million. Uh, they are, I mean, if you look at that, I mean, uh, pretty much, what, 68. So what's that, 10 times 68? So they are a 20, it's not cheap, not cheap. But I mean, if you look at the, the share price, you know, look where we come from. They, they listed, uh, back, they're pretty much back at IPO level, they were. So they listed yeah. basically back in 2018 at uh, 218, rallied to 480. Uh, and uh, and today they are having a nice little bump there, but they're not getting over that 200-day moving average yet because they've been in a downtrend. And same with Hargreaves Lansdale. I mean, Hargreaves is the big boy, the, the, the major player here. Um, and they've been hammered. But I do think, like I said, they, look, at, look at Hargreaves Lansdale. It's come down from literally 24 quid to 734. Uh, and they've struggled. You know, they come up with results and they literally just dipped down still in this little bit of a downtrend but again once the market turns these will all rise these asset managers these brokers uh, whatever uh, absolutely and, uh, yeah well well yeah. so so it's all about trading right like well i again yeah. aj i don't know the split of revenues but i imagine a lot of their revenues come from you know commissions on trades right yeah. so so is, if people start trading again which is usually the case when you you know what in an up market there's yeah. just more activity we know for a fact that there's activities dried up and it's proven out by all those share the share prices of the Hargreaves Lansdowns of this world. So it's good to see that AJ Bell, one of the other big ones, uh, mm-hmm. seems to be picking up because that's an early sign that the markets are bouncing. You see yeah. what I mean? Well, yeah. look at that. I mean, th- that's unusual. I mean, they've obviously nicking market share maybe of Hargreaves Lansdown because another successful year with customers increasing by 50,000, 51,000 closer to 476,000. Uh, and platform net inflows of 4.2 billion. Uh, what is the rule of thumb? It's not like a rule of thumb is like one or two percent of assets under management. It, it's a, it's a rough rule of thumb, but that's where the market cap should be. So if you got mm-hmm. a seven, they got record assets of seventy billion. Sort of that, the seven billion, seven hundred million. So well, that yeah, million, I mean yeah. that's different though. That you know that that's what I don't, I don't, I didn't look at their results. That's why I'm asking. Is that yeah. if it's because of trading improving? Then that mm. that's what my point was about improve, yeah. improvement improvements in market. If it's just yeah. that they're stealing market share and their AUM is improving, that's a different story. That's a company specific, you know, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
uh, let's uh, finish off with a couple of uh, you know macro headlines. House prices. Have you seen all the house builders this week? Uh, Barrett Developments, Taylor Wimper, per, per, si- per Simon, which is uh, per Simon, Simon yeah. whichever you know. I don't, I, that's I, what's I, one of the I worst. Ones. The uh, I mean, that's one of the worst. No, no, but it's bounced. Now. It's bounced yeah, aggressively. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was one I was you. looking at. You know that that that. Uh, but that one's like rallied almost twenty five percent in the last. Few look months. at yeah. Look at these. Look at this. This is Bar- Barrett Development and Taylor Wimper, probably the best balance sheets in there. But look at them. Yeah. Look at this. They're fifty-two week highs, right? And this is, you know, and Taylor Wimpy as well, fifty-two week high, exactly the same as that. Persimmon yeah. is is been a hit bit more. It's not really rallied as much. But look at its rally. Look at its yeah, rally. Yeah, yeah, okay. I know. I, mean, I, was, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was saying yesterday that's the barometer. When the and I, I look back at this house house prices and house builders prices rallied before the market bottomed in the great financial crash, and that's when they were indebted. Now they're not. Most of them, yeah. I mean, Taylor Wimpy and Barrett have little or very little or no debt. Uh, they're mm-hmm. very well capitalized. Uh, and so they tend to sort of rally. And, you know, interest rates haven't even come down yet. They're still struggling. Mm-hmm. You know, people are not buying houses a lot as they were. But the fact that they are bouncing says something, doesn't it? It says we've hit the low pretty much. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to go straight up here. They may have to roll over a little bit. But the fact they are bouncing, at, you know, 52 week highs, that is. You know what's Olympian. worth? And, 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 because you have the chart there, go back to the last financial crisis, 2008, and look yeah. at the, the rallies. I, know. Know well, I, 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 I literally wrote this. I went back a, a while back. Right? I literally looked at them, and they were literally rallying about three to six months before the end of um, yeah, yeah, that? before the end there before the markets rallied. There we are. So two thousand nine, and I don't know if this is the same. Yeah, so yeah. that's a rallying in in May. In fact, it's the same. But I mean, I think there's other ones that were rallying away before. Um, but I looked at them. So you know, the the fact that they bounced literally in November. To, in fact, the lows in November two thousand eight. Yeah, uh, and 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 the, in the in the markets was March two thousand nine. So they hit lows before the market did, and they started rising yeah. before the market yeah. did. So it's a very good barometer. But um, like I said, the, the the top line here is um, uh, house prices rise again as mortgage rates rise. Uh, they said uh, Alipac said prices rose by 05 percent in November, the second and I think it's monthly the third, increase in a row. Yeah, yeah, we're on to the third exactly monthly consecutive increase. So it's yeah. it's not just a blip anymore. Yeah, yeah. This is also quite good because, of course, it's good for the, the, the thing. There's, uh, UK's hot labor market shows signs of cooling. As of the start of December last year, there were 48% more job postings on Indeed than before COVID-19 pandemic. But this year, only 10% more than the pre-COVID. So you see that job postings are going down. So that yeah. means, of course, more... Com- and even now, so I'm saying that um, the options uh, of remote or hybrid working have dropped to 14.4% from 163 in May, showing less, less, less competition in that area. And, uh, and also, I, I never understand this. People are using more cash now, right? Because they're saying that it helps them the budget. And now people stop using card. It's only a little bit because, you know, 76% of all transactions are still on card. But who in their right mind thinks that paying by card is not cash, is not real money? It's real money, ladies and gentlemen. If you're spending something on a card, it's still real money. You know, oh, I need to get some paper money in my hand. It helps me out. I think that's a bit backward, isn't it? I still think I'm spending real money when I use my card. Don't you, Vadim? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get some but, paper and coins out. It'll help me a little bit. But um, it does show you cost but, of living crisis. People are trying to do things just, to cut back. But to, you your, know? to your point, though, I still think we're, it's looking like a soft landing. You know what I mean? Yeah, hopefully. You and I have been talking about recession for two years. It hasn't come still. There's no recession. Yeah. There hasn't yeah, been yeah, a recession. Yeah. Now, we know rates have gone up a lot, but the rates have been up now for a year. We've had yeah, rates, yeah. you know, drastic increase in rates, but sitting on it, I know mortgages roll over slowly. I get all that, but it just feels like we're, you know, lining up for a soft landing. And you're right. The minute central banks change their tune and start yeah. saying we're talking about lowering rates, well, then financial markets go mental, right? But yeah. on top of that, the real economy, what's unemployment? It's 4%, 4, 4.2, 4. 4. yeah, so that 4.2, yeah, so, you know, yeah. it's the historic lows still. You know, we, we we were lucky enough to see below four on unemployment, you know, like 3.7, I think, for, yeah. you know, that's that's unbelievable that mm-hmm. we had such low unemployment. So, you know, the economy is resilient. It can it can tolerate a slowdown without being a, a massive yeah. recession. And that's what we're yeah. seeing so far. You know, I, yeah, I, I just I, don't, I, just I don't that. believe a mega recession is coming or anything like that. No, I just, I, like I said, if you're a stock picker, you just have to be careful the sectors you're into because yeah. there's still some pain to come in certain sectors. Uh, yeah, and if it's not priced in, you know, if it's not priced in, you can take a hammer in. So, but of uh, all the places, of all the places, wouldn't you expect that in the house builders? And now they're rallying. Yeah. 
of yeah, all yeah, the yeah. places you'd expect that, right? Well, yeah, I, I suppose again, that's it's, it's sort of been priced in, I suppose, house builders. Because like, if, if we look at something like a, you know, persimmon, uh, and if you take into account just you know, broad figures of like saying, um, let's say, you know, uh, you know. This, this, the, the top of the bottom here. So the highs there was pretty much at, at, at this level, 32 quid. They're down now 61%. So I, they're going to say, I know roughly, are they going to get 60% less orders <laughs> this year or not? And so you could say pretty much they went down to almost 71% down from the high. Of course, they're in a bit of a bubble market. But mm -hmm. you're going to say, even if you price it all in on a, on a, on a figures basis, are they going to sell 50% less houses? You know, are the margins going to hit? So, so it's almost priced in, isn't it? I suppose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I yeah. totally agree. And, but yeah. that's what I mean. The, the, the markets have priced in a recession that hasn't happened. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> so, 2024 so is rally time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Marvelous stuff. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button if you like the content and uh, subscribe to the channel. That's all important. Go hit 5,000 by year end and download the Vox Markets app, voxmarkets.co.uk forward slash app. Vadim, thanks very much for this. And if you, uh, thanks, you, know, if, you want to come, if you want to pop in next Thursday, by all means, you're welcome. All right, fella. Perfect. Thank you.